If you have finally reached a point where training a model on one machine is not possible because the machine cannot hold all of the training data or the model is too large to fit in memory, you need to start using the distributed training API in TensorFlow. With distributed training, you have two broad options. One is model parallelism. If you are training a model with millions of parameters, model parallelism might be your only choice. With model parallelism, we break our model into multiple chunks and then train each chunk on a different machine. The other option is data parallelism, where you split your data into multiple parts and then train a model with different parts of data on different machines. Let's dive a little deeper into data parallelism. With data parallelism, we have two training options. One is asynchronous training and the other one is synchronous training. With synchronous training, you can have a machine with one or more GPUs. We then send a chunk of the data and the model to each GPU and then wait for the GPUs to calculate the gradients. While that is happening, the CPU goes into a wait state. Once all the gradients are sent back, they are all aggregated using a all reduced process. And then the new model is again sent back to the GPUs with a new chunk of data to train. This goes on and on until we have gone through the entire data and trained our model. The steps with asynchronous training are very similar. We take the model and a part of data and send it to the GPUs. But instead of waiting for the gradients to come back, we do not go into a wait state and the gradients come back as and when they become ready. This means that the training is much faster as compared to synchronous training. However, the updates to the parameters can be noisy. There is a hybrid of both versions as well, in which the model is available on different GPUs, but is not synced and is only synced forcibly after every few epochs. If all of this sounds complicated, we do not need to worry about lower level implementation of these strategies. TensorFlow provides with high level classes for each of these training paradigms. Namely, for synchronous training, we have two strategies known as mirrored strategy and multi-worker mirror strategy. And for asynchronous training, we have parameter server strategy. Let's look at these strategy classes in further detail. So if you have a model, if you have a machine with one CPU GPU, your best strategy would be a central storage strategy, which would just perform non-variable calculations like calculating the gradients or partial gradients on GPU. Most of the other stuff would happen on CPU. If you have a machine with multiple GPUs, but they are all on the same machine, best strategy for you would be mirrored strategy. If you have a mesh of system where multiple GPUs are present over many different machines, best strategy for you would be the multi-worker mirrored strategy. Now let's dive into code and see how to how easy it is to use all of these strategy classes while you are training a model. Train a model. First, let's go ahead and import some libraries. All right, now that we have imported all the required libraries, we can now go ahead and describe our model. For, for the model, we're just gonna train a simple feed-forward neural network on MNIST dataset. All right, so our model is ready. The method that creates our model is ready. Now let's jump ahead and see how we load the strategy classes and see how the model gets replicated on different GPUs.
so i'm just going to be using mirrored strategy now let's see how many replicas or how many gpus you have we have in sync using this strategy All right, so we have one GPU. Let's see on the system how many GPUs we have. We can do that based just by running the NVIDIA SMI command. It'll show us how many GPUs we have. All right, so we just have one GPU and yeah, so whenever we train our model, that GPU is going to be used. Now that we have instantiated a strategy class, we can now go ahead and use this strategy class and train our model. To do that first, we need to open a scope in which all of the training will happen. And doing that is very simple with Python. We just call the strategy.scope method. And now whatever training code we write, we write in this scopes block and automatically all of that code gets replicated on all the GPUs that we have. All right, so first let's create the model that we have so using our create model method then let's write a method to generate the training data like we said we're going to be using the MNIST data set to train so let's load that MNIST returns us four things which is the train and training labels and test data and test labels. All right, let's reshape this training data so that it matches the input layer of our neural network. So MNIST has 60,000 samples and the first layer in our neural network has 784 neurons. Uh, similarly y train so we first want to convert the labels into a one hot vector so we'd use the two categorical method for it and then reshape that into a one cross ten vector once your train data and train label is ready can now loop over it and return them from the generator all right so that completes our train data generator let's create a tf data set from that so that we can pass that onto our model so we are going to be creating this data set from a generator and the name of that generator is gen train data. We need to define the output signature for it so that the TF data set knows what is going to be returned from this generator. So we know the first tensor that we are returning is of shape 1, 784. And the next tensor we are returning is of shape one cross 10 which is nothing but our labels and then finally we want to batch this data set so let's take 512 entries at a time when we are training so all in all we'll have 60,000 upon 512 batches to train all right now we are ready to compile our model so let's compile our model for optimizer I'm going to be using Adam and for loss method I'm going to be using categorical cross entropy. For metrics, let's just track accuracy for now. And finally, we are ready to call the fit method on our model and train it. And let's just train it for five epochs.
All right, so the model training is finished and now our model is trained. It's about 91% accurate. You can now go ahead and save this distributed model and then use it later on in your application or anywhere else that you like. Now that we know how to use these strategies in code, how would you go about and pick a strategy? Picking a strategy depends a lot on your situation. You could have one machine with many GPUs or many machines with many different GPUs. You could either have a fast CPU GPU connection or you can have a fast GPU GPU connection. If you fall in the first block, which is that you have a fast CPU GPU connection and you have all your GPUs in one machine, central storage strategy would be the best for you. If you have a fast GPU GPU connection, which is to say your GPUs are connected using NV link, then you can go ahead and use mirrored strategy. And if you have many machines with many GPUs, the only strategy you have is multi-worker mirror strategy. So that's it about data parallelism. For model parallelism, there is a whole library built on top of TensorFlow called TensorFlow Mesh, which we will talk about in the next video. If you are interested about model parallelism with TensorFlow Mesh, you can go ahead and watch the video from the TensorFlow team on YouTube. I'll drop a link down in the description. Data parallelism and model parallelism together power most of the cutting edge AI solutions today, be it ChatGPT or DALI -E from OpenAI. You are now ready to go ahead and train your first model using distributed training.